the Provincial Development Organism, PDO, AFW, through the PDO Antenna Nigeria, in collaboration with Don Bosco Tech Africa, organized a stakeholders roundtable on TVET in Nigeria. The event which was held at LCCI ground, Alausa Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria, saw an array of TVET players from the industry, TVET providers, non-governmental organizations, civil society organizations, and a whole lot of stakeholders who came around to deliberate on the way forward. The theme of the roundtable was labor markets and Tibet delivery, the role of government, Tibet centers, CSOs, and industry. And the roundtable was organized specifically to share information on the Tibet sector and TV delivery in Nigeria, present best practices, propose some lines of action for government, for policy concentration, as well as CSO, NGOs, TV centers for their concentration and planning. Here in Nigeria, we have uh, two functioning TV centers, it used to be three. We moved one to uh, a different uh, TV center in Ondo, southwest Nigeria where we have courses like electrical, mechanical, woodwork and furniture. The school didn't close down, but it is functioning alongside that of Ondo. In Onicha as well, Southeast Nigeria, we probably have a TVET center, and both TVET centers are doing well at the moment. We try as much as possible, you know, uh, in accordance with the seven missions of the JSO, uh, you know, that is across Africa, provided by DBTEC Africa. What we do is try to understand the need of the labor market, try to help young people to find their career paths, telling them about the importance of technical education, the importance of TVET. We do that in collaboration with other stakeholders because we don't just train in our centers. What we do is we try to give the training, you know, that is market driven. We train as much as possible so that when those we train go out, they easily find jobs. Achievements so far and contributions. Uh, so far, we have uh, trained over 6,000 graduates who are highly skilled and who are also competent. Because today, the world needs competent technicians. If you understand pictorial analysis, everything that will make that chick a hen or a cock is already inside it. What you needed to do is to feed that thing that is inside it, it will blow up. And if you make the mistake of not managing it very well, it can die off at this point. But if you manage it well, it can actually create multiples of itself. That is about vocational and technical education. Training for specific vocation has existed for thousands of years. You know, from the beginning of the creation of man, you can check it. I actually understand that Jesus Christ was the captain of the Father world. Oh, yes, certainly. A <laughs> lot of ladies here learn how to cook, first of all, from their mother. Isn't it true? Yes. Today, we have subordinated polytechnic to university. They are not the same thing. For goodness sake, they are not the same thing. No one is inferior to the other. We must accept technical education. The three things we need it to do. Okay? We must accept technical education for what it is. The headquarters is in Nairobi, Kenya. It is the very sad and the responsibility of making sure we are still relevant technically across Africa. As uh, Benson said in the introduction, we have 100, what is it, 97 technical schools across Africa. 97 technical schools across Africa. Functional one, we are doing well. In Nigeria, like you showed me, we have two. So, Bongo School Tech Africa assisted greatly, you know, uh, in making sure the job service office functions. It is so in all the Tibet centers in Nigeria, I mean, uh, in, in Africa, okay? In Nigeria, like you heard already, we have two Tibet centers, function it used to be three, but uh, because of uh, our time to upgrade and uh, stuff like that, we moved the one in our to Ondo. So we try to let them understand the importance and how they could make this choice for both boys and girls. We are very gender sensitive, we don't just do for boys. We do for girls as well, you know, to, to, to make certain international best practices. 
not quite standard uh, in order to have a high level of standard education in our center in the Toboso Center of this uh, project. It's a two-year project. Is um, the main uh, one of the main objectives is tackle tackle the digital migration through awareness campaign through also technical education and vocational training in creating for creative. Education and knowledge has always been of great importance to the family enterprise Festo. Since more than 55 years now, we are promoting education and skills development for productivity, we call it education at work, and employability, we call it educa um, education for work. Before we start, let's have some observations. This is a statement from the Director General of the African Development Bank. And he's pointing developing nations at value for everything they produce, while poor nations export raw materials. So we are still at the stage where we export raw materials. But not only in Nigeria, also many African countries. So it is important that Africa must work for itself, its people, and not exporting wealth to others. Looking to the figure in 2014, which it's very, very scary, 1.1 billion. 1.1 billion means 1.1 billion young people are at the age for employment. While the industry will only grow by 7% per year over the next five years, which generates only 40 million jobs. What is required to make this happen? Um, are shared only a lesser number uh, would participate and that's what we see that accounts for the difference between 130 companies and the 50 companies that eventually sent uh, traders and the project kicks off the following year in 2013. All the independent um, assessors of the curriculum confirmed that this curriculum was extremely competitive, relevant to the Nigerian um, ecosystem and also um, replicable and also comparable to any curriculum outside of Nigeria. So it's very competitive and market driven. Usually, as with any initiative, uh, the level of enthusiasm sometimes you know, varies and so you will have, after the initial flush of excitement, uh, some companies will drop off because one of the things that was clearly stated was compliance in terms of whatever uh, the requirements of every participating company. The standards were not dropped for any company. It was important to ensure that compliance was maintained at the required levels. There were seven presentations from resource persons across the government, CSO, NGO, industry, and Don Bosco. The first father, Samuel Agudosi, SDB, principal on each Tibet center, and the Tibet Nigerian delegation, dealt on the topic, Tibet delivery at Don Bosco. The second presentation was Mr. Kletus Etukakwa, the National Job Service Officer, Nigeria, who dealt on the topic GSOs and Corporate Corporation. The third, Mr. Benga Adebija, who is the Director General of Nigerian German Business Association, dealt beautifully on the topic of industrial training, the pilot experience of the German dual system in Nigeria. Mr. Thomas Oskarinji, the Vice Country Director in Nigeria also was there to do a little presentation on promoting competence-based approach for Tibet. Engineer Charles Ilebunam, MDCO Aesthetics Concept, dealt on the topic developing industrial manpower via technical and vocational training. 
Engineer Laulu Oguntui, Director, Technical and Vocational Services, Lagos State, was on hand to deliver on the role of government in sustaining functional technical and vocational education in Nigeria. Mr. Peter St. Pierre, Director of Festo Didactics and Board Member of AHK, was on hand also to deliver on modern technology didactics. The round table, which was very rich in delivery of presentation, also moved into the second session of discussion, question and answers. Numerous questions were asked, with most directed at the government Tibet and players as well. It was a good time for stakeholders to come together and chat a way forward, especially for Tibet delivery in Nigeria, in order to help build a better future for our young boys and girls.